given a horizontal asymptote at y equal to minus pi halves, let's sketch the graph of inverse tangent of 1 minus x squared. Since I'm dealing with inverse functions, the first thing I have to worry about is what will the domain be? The simple rule for this is we're going to interchange the range of f with the domain of f inverse. So since we're looking at inverse tan, we have to worry about what points are allowable to stick into f inverse. Well, if I look at the range of tangent, tangent looks like this. Its range is going to be anything that gets cut by a horizontal line. Well, if you notice, for every point on the y-axis, we're going to have a point that goes with tangent. So the range of f is going to be everything in this case. Range of tangent is the entire real line. That means the domain of inverse tangent is the entire x-axis. So we can use any x. Any x stuck into inverse tangent makes sense. So it doesn't matter what I use for 1 minus x squared. As long as 1 minus x squared makes sense, and it will if we stick a real number in there, we can use that in the inverse tangent. So to start off, our domain is going to be everything. Next, we just proceed as we normally would. We'll do zeros, first derivative, and second derivative, and get a pretty graph. So when does inverse tangent of 1 minus x squared equal 0? Well, we apply our language trick. I apply tangent to both sides. And that leaves me with 1 minus x squared equals the tangent of 0. Tangent of 0 is equal to 0. So I can factor the 1 minus x squared into 1 minus x, 1 plus x equals 0. Or 0 is at plus minus 1. So sketch those on the graph. Next, we want to do increasing and decreasing. So I'm going to do the derivative of the inverse tangent of 1 minus x squared. So what's the rule? The rule is I put a box around here. And then derivative is take 1 over 1 plus box squared, and then multiply that by the derivative of the box. So 1 plus box squared. I'm going to put a 1 minus x squared in there. Derivative of the box is just going to be the derivative of 1 minus x squared, which is minus 2x. So we're looking at this function here. I'm going to have minus 2x. We expand this, and that gives me x4 minus 2x squared plus 2. If I stick this into the quadratic equation, we wind up taking the square root of a negative number. OK, note, when I do the quadratic equation, we're going to let our x squared be equal to y. So we're really solving y squared minus 2y plus 2. But there will be no solutions to that. So there will be no solutions for the x squared either. Point is, we don't have to worry about the bottom. We're not going to divide by 0. I only have to worry about what's on top if I want to find zeros. So that can only happen if this is x equal to 0. So we want to find f of 0 so I can plot the point. So we want tan inverse of 1. I let theta be equal to tan inverse of 1. Tan theta equals 1 by pushing it over. We have sine theta over cosine theta equals 1 or sine is equal to cosine, and we know the reference angle is pi over 4. Now to figure out the quadrant, let's take a look. We know that the inverse tangent only gives us angles between minus pi halves and pi halves, so I darken that. But we also notice we have sine over cosine equal to 1. Well, sine is the y value, cosine is the x value, so we have y over x equals 1 or y equals x. So that's going to be that line there. And we see where that line hits our region of allowable angles. So we're in the first quadrant. So that's going to mean the angle that I use is going to be plain old pi over 4, because that already shows up in quadrant 1. So that's my point here. And pi over 4, pi is roughly 3. So that's roughly 3 quarters. And we know it's going to be just under the 1. So we're going to check a point on each side of 0 f prime of 1 gives me minus 2, so we're decreasing here. f prime of minus 1 gives me 2, so we're increasing over here. So that gives me the increasing and decreasing. Finally, we have second derivative of x. So we're going to have to apply a quotient rule to this here, and that's going to be pretty messy, but let's see what happens. So we're going to take derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. OK, 
Okay, we work that out. And then over bottom squared. Now, we already know bottom squared can never be equal to zero. So in terms of finding critical points, we can pretend it's not there. For the thing on top, I get 6x to the fourth minus 4x squared minus 4. Set y equal to x squared. Put it into the quadratic equation. That's going to give you y equal to 1.22. You take the square root of that. That's going to give you plus minus 1.1. And you can check that these are going to be zeros for this thing on top. Okay, so let's plot this on the graph. Okay, well, I don't really need to know what these points are going to be. I just want to get a good idea what the shape of the graph is. So I'll just skip that. But we do know that we're going to get the breaks for concavity at the plus minus 1.1. I check a point in each region to determine concavity. So f of 0 gives me minus 4 over 4. So we're concave down here. f of 2 is going to be 76 over 100. So we're positive there, concave up. And same for f of minus 2, concave up here. So now we know the increasing and decreasing, concave up, concave down, and concave up. So probably the best bet is to start at 0. So if I go this way, it's bowl down. Here we're decreasing. Here we're increasing. And I can keep going down until I get to around here with both of those. Then I have to switch the concave up. So it's still decreasing, but it's going to go up and then match it up to the asymptote. And the same thing on the other side. It's going to be increasing, concave up, coming from the asymptote. So that's my graph of inverse tangent of 1 minus x squared.